much for joining me for our morning worship and morning prayer. I am so uh, grateful that uh, that you are here. Mariam, thank you very much. Uh, Mariam, is everything all right down there? I'm sorry, sir. Is everything okay finally? Did they, did they sort it out? Family did not want you to go. Yeah, so they called me. The agency, the agency sent me yeah, behind me, so I should hold on to fight. Okay. Do you now believe in the power of prayer? Yeah. Okay. What I told you is what I told you. It normally takes up yes. to it normally takes up to a month for a woman in a dementia and Alzheimer's situation to get used to the caregiver. All, it takes like almost a month. They will give you all the hell you need within the first one month. Your job is to be as calm as possible. There is camera there monitoring everything you're doing so you don't have any problem. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, I have worked with Alzheimer's and dementia people before. And I understand, especially if the person has never... If the person is Caucasian, they've never worked with a, 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 a light-skinned woman like you, who is also an African, it's difficult for them because there are many who have never. There are many of them who yeah. have never stepped outside the four walls of the United States. But then, too, when you look at the United States carefully, you will find out that those who spearhead a lot of things for, for, for the under, underdogs are also Caucasian in a lot of ways. So don't let that frighten you. She's not racial against you. She's only having problems. She will be all right. She will get used to you. And she will write beautiful things about you that you are the best thing that has ever happened to her. And remember my prayer. I pray that you are going to take care of her uh, for a very long time. She will calm down and you will uh, continue to enjoy your job. Don't let those things scare you. Okay? Okay. Rebecca. Yeah. Good morning. How are you? Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, powerful lady from Sudan. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, yeah, so. Yes, yeah, so. Mm. I want to thank each of you for joining me for prayer this morning. I had wonderful dreams. Oh my goodness. Since yesterday morning, apart from the little flu or cold, um, okay. Apart from apart from the um, yes, welcome. Jillian. No, it's C. Oh, see you are there. Wonderful, wonderful, welcome. So, apart from the uh, the cold and the flu that happened yesterday, and um, and um, uh, it took, took some soup all of that, and I'm fine. I mean, it has been an exciting two weeks for me. It's almost like I am being driven in the cloud. I'm telling you, and I've been having wonderful dreams, beautiful dreams. And Father, I call all of them to begin to happen immediately. To begin to happen immediately. Thank you for handing the key over to me. <laughs> Just make sure that um, God begin to pour into you what he wants to do for you, what he wants to do through you. I am lighting a candle this morning to God the Father, our God, the bringer of ideas, and to God the Son, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, the one who was born in Bethlehem. Yes, the carpenter of Nazareth, the one who performed miracles on the earth, the one 
through whom we have redemption by his crucifixion, although he did nothing, that warranted him being tortured and brutalized mercilessly like that. The one who was put in the bubble of the earth, in death, and yet he went to the land of the dead and conquered the power of the enemy, the very one who rose again from the dead for us. We thank him, and we like this for the Holy Spirit, God in the now. I love that title, God in the now, the eyes of the Godhead on the earth, the gatekeeper, the doorkeeper, the guardian of the earth. Father, we light this candle for you to represent that you are light, you are our God, and that we need fire, we need power for everything. Candle represent power, it represent fire, it represent beauty, loveliness. We are all this. Lord, we accept all of this and we accept happiness, joy, love, peace, and all the promotion and all the privileges and provisions that you have for us in our relationship with you. We are so grateful. And I also, this morning, um, remember that today we will be, um, today we'll be having the romantic love line. So because of it, I am lighting this um, candle this early morning. I'm writing this, uh, I'm lighting this candle also, not just for the Godhead, but also uh, for you guys out there. I'm lighting it out for all the single women out there who are calling upon God to bless them with the virtues and character that they need in order to be in a wonderful marriage. And for those who are already in marriage, I like this for you, all the women, that the Almighty God will, through the light of the world, Jesus Christ, will bring to you and bless your marriages. This morning, I am asking God to bless and to protect you, Rebecca. Devinda, Mary of Nebraska, the wife of the man that normally calls from uh, Seattle, I cannot even pronounce his name. Yeah, he's been very faithfully coming to this program. Also, I'm lighting this for every young and single man. There is one in um, Germany. In fact, there are many in Germany, I'm sorry. And I'm also lighting this for Stephanie, her son, Dorothy, for those of you in Malaysia, Singapore, those of you in the UK, for Geneva, I'm lighting this especially for my administrator. She deserves this. She work hard. Yes, for girl, Cherlyn, Bev, Christine, for every one of you out there, Barbara, Terry, Sandra, um, Kendra. Um, Lisa, Freddy, Frida. I'm lighting this for Geraldine, my lovely lady out there, and for your kids, and for all the women with kids struggling out there. I light this for them. For my daughter, Fevan Press, Queen Kiana, I light this. Girl, for you and your kids, we light this light. For Dana, for Angel, I like this. For J. Truth, I like this. For Doris Itodo, lovely one, I like this. You and your daughters. And for every one of you that I cannot even remember, in terms of I do not want to call out your names. That's what I mean. There are so many names. If I start here, I cannot even finish. Lee, I remember you in Australia today. I remember you in Australia. Eric in Solomon Island, I remember you. Devon and Marsha and Junior and the rest of you. 
and uh, Johnson Paul in Grenada, I remember you. Yes. And um, there are so many of you. Many of you, Kishan, Amanda. There are so many of you. Today, I will be doing a house visitation. I'll be doing house visitation, my normal shepherd work. I'll be calling many of you. I am lighting this light for C and for G in Montreal. I'm lighting this for for Pum, for Marlin, and, and so many of you out there. I am asking the Almighty God to visit you and to bless you, to anoint you, and to lead you, to bless you with all that you need for today and for your future. Amen. and the earth, our King and our God. Respond to the cry of your people this morning. Feel your people with tremendous joy. Joy that will never leave them. Protect your people from all evil. Back up your people with your presence and glory. Surprise your people with miracles. We ask all this in the name of him. Satan bows and all evil spirits. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness. We are beginning to see what Jesus enjoys. What are the things that motivates him? What are the things that empowers him? What are the things that he has God? Remember that the father proclaimed him, called him God. David in his Psalms called him my Lord. He is the son of David. And yet David called him his Lord. You see here, the person of Jesus is being unraveled. He loves to do the right thing. To say the right thing. To think the right thing. To focus and concentrate on what carries with it benefits, profits, and enjoyments. The things that makes God happy is what he focuses on. He focuses on on the Father. What is the Father looking for? What will make 
make my father happy. And one of those things is the love of people. Brothers and sisters, when you begin to see human beings as your enemies, you are finished. When you begin to see human beings as personalities that must be loved and cared for, then you are like Jesus. If human beings are object of suspicions and quarrels and drama, then you are finished. The love of righteousness, the practice of the things of God, that's righteousness. The ability to focus your mind, your spirit. I have been studying with Stephanie and the rest of you about what Paul says in Philippians chapter 4. To focus your mind on what is true, what is noble. What is excellent? What is true? What is lovely? Paul isn't stupid when he wrote those stuff because he knows that our minds and spirits and bodies need to be protected. We cannot spend all of our life doing battles that we do not need to do. Brothers and sisters, do not spend your lifetime doing battles that does not belong to you. Can you please put that down for me? Do not do battles that do not belong to you. Many of you are doing the wrong spiritual warfare the wrong emotional warfare, the wrong financial warfare. You belong to the wrong marital place. Some of you belong to the wrong, wrong career. How do you know you are not enjoying it? You are not, you don't feel thrilled and excited to go to your job. Righteousness is far beyond the kind of holiness practice that I saw in my lifetime in some Christian movements whereby they abandon themselves. The men and the women look raggedy. They don't look good. They don't smell good. And they call that holiness. They abstain from the world. They completely abandon the world. That is foolishness. Some of them don't want to have cars. They don't want to live in civilization. They don't want to have things that makes life easy. Make life noble. And you call that righteousness? I call that stupidity ignorance and foolishness of the highest kind. My belief is this. Those who call themselves sons and daughters of God, who want to practice the life of righteousness, the life of righteousness also involve a lifestyle of the kingdom. And what is the lifestyle of the kingdom? It is abundance also. It is plenty. The kingdom is a balanced lifestyle, a balanced thinking. Some become born again and abandon their husband or wife in the name of following Jesus. Jesus didn't say that. 
Jesus did not say that when your wife lost her libido, you should walk away. Or your husband lost his potency, you should walk away. Jesus did not say that either of you lost a job, the other should pack and leave. The practice of righteousness goes beyond what we think. It goes beyond the ceremonial washing. It is righteousness is the love of God and the love of human from the depth of your heart with intelligence. You must love smart. Love is not blind. Like I corrected Friday on Sunday. So there's nothing like love is blind. Or deaf and dumb. Love is not deaf and dumb. I know like my daughter. One of my daughters. She had everything. But she saw herself as a bait. As nothing. She had no use for the husband, except make babies, bedroom thing, eats, never was consulted, and she walks away. I don't blame her. Jesus says that our righteousness must be greater than the one of the Pharisees and Sadducees. He loved righteousness. Righteousness means your desire and your practice of the will of God. What is God saying about you? What is God saying about me? Hello? Who is this? Yeah, Ruth, we normally have prayers by 9 o'clock, you know that, uh, by 8 o'clock your time. You live in uh, Nebraska? It's not letting you in? Yeah, we are in prayers right now. You can call in if you want to. Four two four two zero three. 8400 and the access code is 955967. When you enter, you mute your phone, you press mute, okay? Okay. Call, call me after the prayer, okay? Someone did not remember the, uh, the number to the, to the morning prayer. Janet, good morning. How are you, Mama? You better. So, righteousness here, the love of righteousness also has to do with the right perception of life. The right perception of life. It's not everything people tell you you have to do. Okay. These are the qualities that make Jesus. Thou hast loved righteousness. Jesus loves righteousness. Righteousness also means don't stoop down to be cheap. Don't let other people run you over. I'm now going deep with the word righteousness. In the Hebrew, it also contains the word justice. Righteousness means justice. What is the right thing? What is fair play? It contains quality of goodness and beauty and abundance. Justice. You must understand your legal place and obligations in the kingdom of righteousness, in the kingdom of God. Purity. Let's go there. You do every 
everything from the point of view of things being done right. Look at that. You have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. See that? And other characteristics that makes Jesus who he is. The hatred for what is wrong. Lucifer became Satan because of his love for what is wrong. And upholding everything that God hates, he loves. Let me tell you one of the strongest things you have to run away from. Iniquity contains the word rebellion, lawlessness, stubbornness. You know what is the right thing to do. And you decide. Okay, let me put it this way. There are things that you should not do. Because of your, remember what God said, you are precious, honorable, and he loves you. I am a witness, and I have experienced this, that people far away can push you and manipulate you into doing things that you should never do. And it is your place to tell God about it. There are some of you, your husband and wife, are lawless, doing things that they shouldn't do in secret. Go on your knees and pray for them and God will change them. And many a times it is somebody else's spirit that has come to live in the, in the life of that man or woman. So many a time while pastors are trying to cast out evil spirit, it's actually the spirit of another human being. In order to destroy the person from you. Hatred for what is wrong. You can't bribe Jesus. You cannot. Because he loved righteousness and he hated iniquity. Therefore, God, God the Father, even thy God, wow, hath anointed thee, anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Hallelujah. Above thy fellows, you do one thing, it makes a lot of things happen for you. Forget, I will continue with this anointing by God tomorrow morning. I will continue with it tomorrow morning. I love this. But let's just stop there for today. That is too exciting for me. If I start, I won't be able to get out of here. <sighs> the practice of righteousness and the hatred for iniquity. Those little things in your bedroom, you decide when your partner is not around. Those are the things God is looking at. It is what you do in private that really, really matters a lot. Accept, let's, start, let's start the practice of righteousness from accept yourself for who you are. Dear Father, bless your people with this word. Take it to everywhere in the world. I ask 
asked you last, last night to bring in new people into the ministry from every nation of the earth. You say you will give me the nations as my inheritance and the ends of the earth as my possessions. And that I will divide among the strong. Cover your people with your divine presence. Lead them out throughout today and bring them safe. Jesus, you are the shepherd. I am a good shepherd in you, through you. Fill your people with new ability. We thank you, we praise you. Provide for your people. As we work hard, as we work smart, as we find better ways to do what you've called us to do, we thank you. We ask for you to back us up and to lead us. We ask for divine assistance, the ministries of angels. Let mid seven angels be sent to the earth to help us in our administrative work, in our day-to-day -day living. Let them bring us the money, the material resources that we need. Protect your people, O oh God. We know we are. Let fire cover us so that nothing can break into us. Lord, cover us and all you've given to us with the wall of iron and the wall of the blood of the Lamb. We plead on the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We call on his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Without you, we can do nothing. Respond to our yearning for divine help and lead us even this day for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours for now and forever. Amen and amen and amen. And so Father, fill us with the ability to do the right thing. Turn us away from everything that is of the world of iniquity. Let your light shine into anything you see in us that is darkened and chase it away forever. Heal those who are sick. Lord, today, as I get involved in the ministry of healing, supernatural direction, miracle signs and wonders, I look forward to new miracles interrupt and intervene in human problems so that we will give you all the glory and all the honor but now and forevermore amen the almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit and let all that you want to do today be successful Amen, and amen, and amen. Remember that Jesus Christ is King, and He is God, and He is behind everything that you are doing today. Amen. amen. I will see you all by 12 noon. I will be concluding the teaching on the Lord's Prayer today. That's interesting. Yeah. I am enjoying sticking on to one thing and doing it right. God be with you and God guides you.